the opposition has lashed the deal, struck to pass some of the government's industrial relations reforms, including the same job, same pay changes to do with labour hire. Here's the Shadow Workplace Minister, Michaelia Cash, in the Senate earlier. So congratulations, big clap everybody, to the ACTU and the Australian Union movement. Because once again, once again, you get one of your long lists of demands, and I have to say it was a very impressive list of demands, nine years in the making in fact, nine years in the making, 18 months in the delivery. I mean, good grief, you give those across the chamber credit. If you want to deliver for the unions, use your numbers and deliver for them. Michaela Cash joins me live in the studio now. Thanks for your company. Why shouldn't uh, uh, the loophole, as the government calls it, but if you've got a worker inside a mining company as an employee, why shouldn't they receive the same income as someone doing the same job from via a labour hire firm? Uh, and that is the entire problem with this part of the bill, Kieran. It was never about labour hire. Service contractors, despite what Mr Burke says, are still included. So you have an economy-wide reach. But I have to say, this bill was always going to go through the parliament, Kieran. All we had wanted as the coalition and business groups was the opportunity to properly scrutinise it, to understand the actual impacts on the business community. Because as we know, it's employers who create jobs in Australia, not the government. The government just puts in place a framework. All we so had so wanted... what happens now in your view, now that it, it is passing? Well, what the business groups today have come out and said, in relation to those aspects of the bill, the labour hire parts, um, it is going to have an impact on them, and in particular the way they conduct their businesses. Service contractors in Australia, they still have to litigate themselves out of being caught up in this bill. But I think what you saw today, Kieran, more than anything was, this is a government that talked big on transparency. Well, where was the transparency today? Where was the discussion with the employers this week saying, we've struck a deal with the crossbench and guess what? We're going to bring forward parts of this bill. What do you say to the argument that this part of the bill that's yep. gone through, the, the labour hire yep. slash, you know, same job, same yep. pay part of the bill, uh, that this is all about two companies, Qantas and BHP? that they were the, the two companies that have exploited that the most? Well, in the first instance, that's the problem with the bill then, isn't it? It's not about two companies and it's not about labour hire. That is the entire issue that employers across Australia have had with this bill, the unintended consequences, or should I say in Mr Burke's case, the intended consequences. Labour hire, uh, service contractors are still included. They have to litigate themselves out, which means additional cost for business, additional regulatory burden, and ultimately, what happens? They pass the costs on to the consumer. But as I said, what this reflects is a breach of trust with the Australian Senate, a breach of trust with employers. I accept the bill was always going to go through. But what I don't accept is a government that talked big about transparency just rushes the bill through on the last day of sitting with no debate. 